Hi, I'm Kevin Poniatowski, and today I want to talk to you about probably the most insidious vulnerability that's out there on the internet today, and it's called cross-site scripting. Now, it's been estimated that up to 75% of our web applications today have at least one cross-site scripting vulnerability. And what's really interesting is that really up until 2005, security researchers didn't understand the power of cross-site scripting. Well, today, the exact vulnerability I'm going to talk about is persistent cross-site scripting. This is the most dangerous of the cross-site scripting flavors that are out there. There's also reflective cross-site scripting, DOM-based cross-site scripting, but the worst one is persistent cross-site scripting. So I'm going to explain to you exactly how that works, and so you'll see how dangerous cross-site scripting can really be. Now, cross-site scripting is a web-based attack but it's not an attack against a vulnerable web application. It's an attack against a user. Now, the user needs to browse to a vulnerable web application because this is the way that the attacker is able to deliver malicious content to the user. And they do this through the use of a scripting language like JavaScript, VBScript, HTML. Now, those scripting languages aren't inherently evil. That's not the case. Many legitimate websites use these scripts to perform actions and events on your browser. That's the way we want them to work. But unfortunately, these scripting languages can also be used for evil. And that's exactly what's happening here with persistent cross-site scripting. An attacker is delivering malicious content to a user through a vulnerable web application and then having that scripting language being executed on their browser. So what can an attacker do if they're able to successfully pull off a persistent cross-site scripting attack? Well, by exploiting this vulnerability, one of the more common things that we see is they can hijack one of your accounts. So they could hijack your online banking account. They could hijack uh, one of your online shopping accounts. And they do this by stealing your session ID using a scripting language. So if they can grab one of your session IDs from a cookie that you're using uh, when you log into an online banking application, for example, they can now perform actions as if they were you. Except, of course, the actions that they want to do are definitely not anything that you would ever want to do. They can also use persistent cross-site scripting vulnerabilities to spread web worms. We saw this in the MySpace worm, where a uh, MySpace user was able to take advantage of a couple of cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in MySpace to replicate that user's JavaScript commands and pass it along to other MySpace users. Another one of the many abilities the attacker can have when they exploit a persistent cross-site scripting vulnerability is they can access your browser's history. Now it's interesting in how they, how they do this because if you think about it, when you click on a link to go somewhere, that link changes color. So the attacker is able to figure out where you've been and where you haven't gone by looking at the color of your link. And scripting languages give the attackers the ability to do this. And finally, worst case scenario with persistent cross-site scripting, the attacker may be able to remotely control your browser, giving them the ability to do anything they want to do with that browser that you would normally be able to do. So what's going on within our web applications that allows an attacker to successfully pull off a persistent cross-site scripting attack? Well, it's very common for us as developers to assume that data coming into our applications is good, when in fact that's very dangerous. It's better to assume that all data coming into our applications is malicious until we prove that it's good. And in the case of persistent cross-site scripting, an attacker will input data directly into our web applications, and it's malicious. And our web applications will then echo that input to any user that comes and browses their website, sending that data that the attacker created directly to the user's browser. Now, the browser knows that it's going to a legitimate website and says, I know what this is. It's a script. I execute this. It assumes that script was written by the web application developers, when in this case it wasn't. That script was written by a malicious attacker. 
This allows an attacker to embed this malicious script and is then run by the user's browser because the user's browser can't tell the difference. It assumes it's, that scripting language is coming from a legitimate website when in fact it's coming from the attacker. Now another line of defense that our web application developers can use is validating this input when it comes into their application to make sure that it's not malicious. But the most important thing is the developers need to sanitize their output before they send it to the user. If they do this, then they, make, they can make sure that no input has come in without being cleaned before being sent out. So let's look at a real world example of how a persistent cross-site scripting vulnerability could be exploited. And the example I'm going to use is an online book review website. And we see those all the time, they're very common. Uh, users want to go online and review a book that they've read. But we're going to take a look at that website from the view, not of a user, but of an abuser. So when an attacker sees a website like this, they're not really interested in writing a review about a book. What they will write in that space is a script, JavaScript, HTML, VB script. And that script is then saved by the vulnerable web application. Now when any legitimate user goes to that book review website and goes to read that book review, what does the vulnerable web application give them? Not a book review, it gives them that scripting language. Now when that scripting language comes to their browser, the browser executes it, allowing that malicious script to be run. Now this is a really serious vulnerability because the user didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do anything dangerous. The user didn't do anything uh, out of the ordinary here. There was no social engineering involved to trick the user. All they did was go to a vulnerable web application. So let's take a look at a persistent cross-site scripting attack in action. Now here's a slide. In the bottom left-hand corner of this slide, we have Ed the Evildoer. Now the first thing that Ed the Evildoer does is finds a vulnerable web application that he knows he can pull off a persistent cross-site scripting attack with. So Ed will then input malicious script into that web application. Now this is persistent cross-site scripting and that means Ed's attack is stored on the vulnerable website. The vulnerable website has a database and has stored Ed's attack. Now, a legitimate user comes along, and we see that in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, and browses to that vulnerable website. So the web application server now serves up to the legitimate user, Ed the Evildoer's attack. It's downloaded to the user's browser, and the browser now executes it. The final stage is that attack is now executed, and now Confidential information, maybe a session ID, is sent from a legitimate user to Ed the evildoer. The persistent cross-site scripting attack has been pulled off. So I hope you can see how dangerous persistent cross-site scripting attacks can be. The user in the last case we saw didn't do anything wrong. All that user did was browse to a vulnerable website. There was no social engineering involved here. The user didn't click on a link in their email or do anything else that would be considered unsafe. With persistent cross-site scripting, the user doesn't have to do anything wrong. And that's what makes this attack so scary. And like I said before, it's been estimated that 75% of our web applications out there have some form of a cross-site scripting vulnerability. The internet is definitely not a safe place as much as you'd like to believe it. It's very convenient for us to go shopping online, do our banking online, but it's not safe. It's like the wild, wild west. There's a lot of cool things we can do there, but it's also a very dangerous place to live. So thank you again for watching my persistent cross-site scripting vulnerability lecture. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to email me at the email address I provided there. Again, my name is Kevin Poniatowski and be safe.